Like men, women's fertility is also orchestrated from the pituitary gland in the base of her brain. But unlike men, women's reproductive organs are inside her body. Here we see the female reproductive organs, the ovaries, the fallopian tube, and the uterus. A woman's ovaries are about the size and shape of almonds and contain at her birth all of the eggs or ovum she will ever have, around one million. During her reproductive lifetime, only 300 to 400 eggs are actually ovulated. The rest atrophy and are never released as mature eggs. When all of her eggs have been released or ovulated, a woman experiences menopause. At this point, there are no more eggs. Ovulation and menstruation cease. This is in contrast to sperm production in males, which is continuous. The two fallopian tubes are trumpet-shaped organs, which form a connecting link from the ovaries to the uterus. And it is in the outer third portion of the fallopian tubes where conception takes place. At the ends of the fallopian tubes are the fimbriae, which are finger-like projections that catch and transport the egg through the fallopian tube towards the uterus after ovulation has taken place. The uterus, or womb, is a muscular organ similar to a small pear in shape and size. It's connected to the fallopian tubes and is located in the lower abdomen. It's very elastic and it greatly expands during pregnancy to accommodate the baby. The inner lining of the uterus is called the endometrium. Its purpose is to receive and nourish the embryo. If the sperm never reaches the egg and fertilization does not occur, then this lining degenerates and is eliminated as part of the menstrual flow. The bottom part of the uterus is the cervix that connects the uterus and vaginal canal. Small tunnels or crypts inside the cervix produce various types of cervical fluid depending on what stage of fertility is present and this fluid is one of the main biomarkers observed by women who use natural family planning to monitor their fertility. The vagina, a muscular tube, connects the cervix to the external genital structures. A woman's reproductive lifetime has different stages. Adolescence is the first five to eight years after menarche, or first menstruation. At this time, cycles are generally longer and quite variable, this is a time of growing towards prime fertility. Maturity is about 20 to 30 years long. Cycles are generally shorter and more regular. Cycles are usually ovulatory. Premenopause is the last five to eight years before menopause. Cycles are generally longer and quite variable. Fertility decreases as a woman ovulates in fewer cycles. Unlike men, women are fertile for a limited amount of time, approximately 30 to 40 years, and their fertility during this time is cyclic. Let's look more closely at the menstrual cycle. A woman's cycle begins at the first day of bleeding. After several days of bleeding, there is a pre-ovulatory phase, which is variable in length, from month to month and from woman to woman. Once ovulation occurs, the post-ovulatory phase is fairly constant about two weeks long. So knowing when a woman ovulates makes it easy to know when her next menstrual period will begin. The menstrual cycle does not unfold haphazardly. It can be likened to an elaborate symphony. It follows a highly orchestrated pattern and there is a sophisticated feedback system between the ovaries and the pituitary gland in the brain. Ovulation occurs on only one day in each cycle. Once the hormonal levels have triggered ovulation, the rise in progesterone prevents further ovulation. Research has shown that only once during a cycle will the hormonal levels cause the release of an egg. Ovulation cannot occur, for example, on the 10th day of a cycle and then again on the 12th or 21st day or any other day of the same cycle. The egg lives only 12 to 24 hours, maybe less, if not fertilized. Sperm need the woman's cervical fluid, also known as mucus, to survive because it contains sugars which aid in sperm survival. Without cervical mucus, sperm die within hours. In favorable mucus, sperm can survive for three to five days. Because the sperm receive nourishment from the female's mucus, they are able to live longer and swim faster in the more alkaline pH of the fertile mucus, upward into the cervix 
and the fallopian tubes. Unhealthy and deformed sperm are filtered out by the cervical mucus. If a woman has had intercourse and ovulation has occurred, it's possible that the sperm will reach the egg. When the egg and sperm unite, this is called conception, the beginning of human life. Conception occurs in the outer portion of the fallopian tube and requires three things. One, the egg to be released within the last 24 hours. Two, the sperm. And three, mucus to help transport the sperm to the egg. At conception, a unique, unrepeatable human being comes into existence. The DNA from the sperm and ovum combine. The one cell divides into two, and from the two cell stage up to and including eight weeks, it's called an embryo. At this point, the DNA is active and begins a rapid process of cell organization, cell division, and differentiation. Tiny hairs on the inside of the fallopian tube, called cilia, move the developing embryo towards the uterus, a journey that takes approximately seven to 10 days. There, the embryo implants in the endometrium, or wall of the womb, where it will continue to grow and develop for nine months. The embryo is not just a mass of cells, but rather a highly diversified individual human being. Three different types of cells, ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm are already functioning in ways that will form all of the systems of the human body. The hormone progesterone impacts a change in the woman's fertile signs, signaling that ovulation has passed and works to quickly stop further ovulation. If another egg is ready and is released within the next 24 hours, twins could result. Progesterone is also responsible for forming a mucus plug at the opening of the cervix. This plug protects a new pregnancy by preventing additional sperm or bacteria from entering the uterus. It continues to support the uterine lining during pregnancy to nourish the new life and also raises the woman's basal body temperature. At 22 days, the baby's heart is beating. At six weeks, brain waves can be measured. And at eight weeks, all of the organs are in place and functioning. Here we see the unborn child at 16 weeks of age. You can see the placenta and umbilical cord. If pregnancy does not occur, the lining of the uterus will slough down and the woman will have her next period. 